Hello my dear friends, this is a painting cat. My name is Catherine. Today we're going to paint with acrylic on a canvas. This is a kind of long tutorial and you can see a final painting have so many details. So please be prepared for really kind of a long process. Real time tutorial gonna take four hours. First part of the tutorial uh, gonna have uh, those part with a landscape and um, I will publish it in October and the next one with a birds and a fence on a foreground it will be available for my uh, Patreon subscribers in November. In this short demonstration tutorial, I will share to you main tips and tricks uh, you need to know to paint this composition. You've been asking to me about what to do with uh, acrylic with a low coverage. It's not possible to use normally, especially if it's a white, so if uh, here any use of it. Usually I like to spread it when I'm preparing my canvases. First I wet canvas and then I spread a tiny amount of acrylic and yes, in this time uh, coverage, you know, you just don't need it. That's it, canvas prepared and we're starting here with a background. Background here, it's a forest, let's say it's a top half of your canvas, canvas, yes, it's a 30, 30 centimeters each time find the big one I'd say yeah because later we will need this space for nice detailization on a foreground so you uh, all start with a very soft very soft light green forest I used a sap green I like this color uh, color of the sky kind of simple here it's just a clear white and uh, meadow meadow in the middle ground I painted with a whole colors it's a orange a little bit of green it can be yellow imagine it's a falling leaves there on a foreground it's a deep green maybe uh, later we even will add darker color here I'm not blending at all and I do not recommend you to use any blending it's a patting um, all brushes you need here, it's a um, natural bristol rough brushes, big one, it's a Deleroni number 12 and a small one, it's a number 4 round brush natural bristol. Basically, right now, all colors you need already here, forest done, at least in general, we not uh, painted any details here yet. It's a meadow already here, main color done. Yes, I recommend two layer brush strokes on top of each other uh, to create a look like it's many layers of the fallen leaves. Let's keep part with the trunks on the background because in the previous tutorials I already explained really detailed how to paint them on the background because really it's uh, four hours and I have to explain everything in just a short like 20-25 minutes here. Next, it's a tree crown, but it's a crown on a middle ground. So imagine it's uh, uh, closer to you and a color I recommend to use bright bright yellow from the start all colors on the background and the middle ground here have to be soft, very clear. I'd say pastel looking, so a lot of white in the mixes. How to paint interesting and natural looking tree crown. It's another tampon. Imagine it's not just a round shape or maybe oval shape. No, it's not like that. Usually, mm, if tree close enough to you, you're able to recognize not just the main uh, general shape of the crone, but also some sap crones, like a segments of the crone. And look how I'm going. First, I'm starting with a new segment. It's like a branch. As soon as I'm happy with a shape of it, 
I'm uniting this one with the previous bigger part of the crown and this way step by step segment by segment you can create natural looking interesting looking tree crown not only yellow here of course also it's a bright orange be careful with a tone of the orange it still uh, need to be light enough all contrast just leave it for a foreground I just love the white color of the sky here. It's kind of typical for the area I'm living. It's north of the country. So lots of time we have a kind of thin layer of the clouds on the sky. And it's a feeling like a sun shining somewhere above. So actually it's a, a soft looking white light everywhere. Even if uh, I just can't see uh, the sun actually, the spot of the sun, sometimes really soft one, it's possible to find, but most of the time no. And at this condition, at this weather, uh, sky looking just as a white. Why I like it so much? Because it's looking not that usual. Usually, um, if you hear word a sky you imagining something blue or cloudy blue and white together just a white i'd say it's not that popular but it's giving a best contrast between a background here on a top of the composition and this leaves this leaves really beautiful choose uh, all those amber looking colors it's a yellow lemon yellow in the center where we have a ray of the light that shining giving a strong highlight also it's a orange bright i'd say even a juicy orange and it can be a brown a little bit of it be careful here we don't have any clear brown from the tube Mm, I like to explain to you some new mixes and here we have uh, one more. It's a combination of yellow, uh, red and a green. This three giving to you different browns. It can look almost as an umber burnt if you mixed uh, a lots of red in it red and a yellow and a tiny bit of green if you will add lots of green it's gonna have a swampy a little bit like a swamp color and uh, with an extra hint of yellow it's turning to the ochres so many combinations with this tree giving you a huge palette of brown colors I painted shapes for the leaves without any sketch lines, but for you, you can find on a Patreon sketch, you can print it and transfer all those lines you need. If you are a beginner, I really recommend you to follow uh, this way because it's a kind of interesting and complicated looking branch and uh, leaves. Also, you can find a photo I choose as a reference for this part of the painting. Detailing here, uh, well, you can follow general rule. If you're painting a tiny veins on a dark looking leaf, uh, you have to paint it with a light color. As soon as you're painting, starting to paint on a light area, you have to paint with a darker color. It can be orange, it can be red even. And as soon as you detailed at least a half of this group, you can unite it with a tiny branch. And yeah, of course, the line, the shape of the branch, you also can transfer from the sketch I prepare for you. Well, some parts I just like to paint without any sketches and in a real-time tutorial you can get some practice with me uh, in a painting without any guiding lines. About the birds, of course I recommend to you to have my sketch because before I spent maybe around an hour, maybe two, to prepare a sketch for you. So it's also part of the painting process. But if you are a beginner, it's really hard to um, catch a proper shape for the tiny birds from the start. 
right? And uh, sketches, it's just helping. Also, you can find um, uh, in uh, materials I prepare for you, you can find photos for the birds as well. I can see all guiding lines here. I'm not sure it's visible for you because it's a pencil graphite. It uh, can look kind of natural with a strong light. I have a really, really strong light when I'm filming, when I'm creating tutorials. So probably you can't see all lines clearly. Just want to let you know, I can see it when I turn my head a little bit and uh, I'm looking at my painting with a light angle from this side. Type uh, of the birds here, it's a tip. I really like it. I think feathers uh, that these birds have looking beautiful. It's like a tiny lemon, fluffy lemon, isn't it? Very bright, very beautiful yellow. I recommend to use from the start lemon yellow. It can be a little bit of um, a yellow medium as well. And yes, of course, it's a nice contrasting feathers on a hat also on her wings, on her tail. It's a black color. You can use black right now already, but be careful, don't give too thick coverage right now, because later, for better value for this bird, you're probably uh, gonna layer some black on top. This way, uh, two or three layers will look deeper than just a one half transparent layer with a black but yeah you at least need to create nicely visible shape because later uh, on the next step we're gonna paint fans and fans actually here yeah, the most complicated detail this composition is done by request of my roses subscribers and uh, it's based on uh, paintings of the Daryl Brush. It's a really famous artist. I um, saw his paintings so many times, they're really popular. I saw it as a calendar, as a paint by numbers kids, by dimensions, many times, everywhere, as a puzzles, as a covers for the notebooks and uh, mobile phones even. And uh, he well known about a really highest level of the detailing. So how create it? Let's see, it's a wooden planks here, it's a fence, old white wooden fence and two little birds sitting on top. And if this composition based on a Daryl uh, brush paintings, it's not repeating exactly his paintings, uh, this composition I uh, created by my own, right? So let's see how to paint detailed wood plank. First of all, I recommend from the start to use a rough, very rough, scratchy, uh, natural bristle brush. And it's a dry brush technique. Imagine you scratching with almost a dry brush with a white first and then with an orange on top. Give some own touch to these wooden planks. Uh, next, switch to another brush. I recommend to choose a flat slanted brush and it's a light orange again. I will make an example on just a one plank here all others uh, possible to create basing on my explanation and you can see here lots of planks actually and um, also it's why the whole tutorial taking uh, that long because you have to repeat a same process for many areas of course i'm gonna use a mole stick i already shared to you this tool it's not that uh, well known i believe but it's really handy. It's just a wooden plank. It's not uh, placed on top on a canvas. It's not touching canvas actually. And uh, my brush just sliding, following direction of the wooden plank. And it's helping to me create uh, straight brush strokes, straight and long very handy and of course it's a handy for beginners it's just a usual normal art tool uh, just not 
everyone somehow knows about it. Uh, orange have to be bright, but not too bright, not white, because uh, next step we gonna give more texture to it. Side parts of the wooden plank, please uh, paint with a mix of blue, black, it's a grayish blue, and a white. A wooden structure. Imagine it's a planks wood that was painted with a white on top, and uh, actually it's reminding to me a story about uh, Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Uh, those one when uh, Tom was painting a fence with a white paint. So right now it's our turn. Yeah, we have to paint it with white, and it's not possible to skip and exchange it for the rat on a rope, isn't it? Create a wooden pattern with just a white, it's a clear white. My brush, it's a flat and slanted with a thin and sharp edge. Lines can look random, not too straight. It can be wavy a little bit, look natural. Some line can be thicker, some can be thinner, mainly it's a random again, because it's a part of the nature, it's still just a wood. Paint it, but not close to each other, because those orange on a previous layer have to be still visible at some places. On a side here, in the shadow, do the same, but color for the pattern have to be darker a little bit, not too dark. It still have to be lighter than those layer you painting on top. So it's a light grayish blue again. I did a mix uh, with a black, a little blue, and a white. Of course, uh, in a real painting, you have to repeat the same for all wooden planks here. Next, it's actually my favorite part because I adore to see and paint a tiny details, all those beauties around. Oh, all those cracks on the wooden planks, on the old ones. Um, you can use two colors. First, it's a uh, bluish gray, grayish blue, uh, whatever you call it. It's a mix combination, cobalt blue, black, and white. It's those colors that we used previously on a side um, part of the wooden plank. And this time, all those cracks gonna look dark enough. But not only, not only this color you can use. Also beautiful looking if you will paint with a bit of dark looking orange or brown color, warm uh, tone brown color. Look like this one. It's a creamy looking creamy on a palette. Paint it with a really thin layer on top. You already have lots of white details, so each color you're gonna put on Everything gonna turn beautiful and visible enough, of course, because you have a white layer under. Spread these colors. You can use uh, another brush, an extra clear brush to spread colors around. You can use just your finger. Well, also I like to use napkins, but be careful with the fingers and the napkins. Uh, you have to change it and clear it in time because sometimes it's an accident when you're bringing some mm, strange color from the previous blend. And nails. It's a lovely details. No way we will skip it, of course. Nails here can be so different. Imagine some of them can be rusty like orange, beautiful orange color here. One nail here, uh, I will create completely rusty orange and another one still have a white paint on top. Light going from the left top, so the bottom part gonna be more orangey and a top part of this nail gonna be darker a little bit. 
Oh, and this rusty color that visible on a wood. Just put it and spread it with your finger a little bit. It's just looking so natural. Imagine it was many rains and uh, all those rust was spreading down from the nails points. And this way, from the general to specific, from the very thick and uh, rough looking brush strokes to the really tiny ones, you will be able to create a really high detailed compositions. When you're happy with a fence, uh, you've got it's a time to detail birds as well. Look, fence here, details on it looking uh, not perfect but well enough already. Also about detailing uh, on a branch of this tree on those leaves, also looking uh, more detailed, more specific than a bird's. So of course we have to bring birds on the same level with a detailization. Also it's a question of volume on uh, uh, bird's bodies. Light from the left to the right, so the chest of this tiny bird down on a fence gonna look brighter than a bottom part. See, I used bright lemon yellow with a bit of white for better coverage. Also black feathers. Give an extra layer if you see like black looking not mm, contrasted enough. If you're painting a hint of highlight on a hat, be careful. Mm, I'd say teed have not really a shiny feathers, it's more matte. It doesn't mean you can't create a spot of light, of a highlight on a hat of this bird, for example. But the spot uh, need to be grayish, uh, more soft, not that uh, crispy, not that bright and of course not white. See, it's a really soft touch of the light on top. About a second bird, I'm not gonna uh, demonstrate a process for it uh, in this short tutorial. Just be sure you're following an opposite way because here the bottom part of this bird uh, gonna have a light on it and a chest part gonna stay in a shadow, mostly in a shadow. No strong shadows here. Again, it's a soft light from the white uh, cloudy sky that generally going from everywhere. And even if you have a um, direction of the light from the um, left to the right, this kind of light not giving a strong light spots, also not giving a strong shadows. And a last touch here, it's the shadows behind fence. Here you can use a mix of the green and the black. Just be sure you really have a nice contrast between beautiful white painted fence and grass behind it. Best contrast always looking catchy. So of course if you will paint a uh, deeper shadows behind it, you're giving a more attention to the fans and the birds on it. All I have to do right now is uh, sign my painting. Really hope you enjoyed it. My friends, thank you very much for joining me today and for all of your support. It really means a lot to me. Sometimes, you know, I just feel no power to paint and uh, create something interesting, find some ideas. But your comments, your uh, paintings you sharing to me through the Instagram, it's my inspiration and thank you very much for your paintings and uh, for you joining me here. Please subscribe my channel, thumbs up and of course welcome on my Patreon. Paint with me in real time. I'll catch you on my next tutorials. I wish you all the best. Bye bye.